will start for you a completely different type of project. And uh, that is um, how to create wearable art. Because we have done so much, and uh, especially when it comes to color theory and all that, that I thought that it is about time for me to uh, start uh, talking a little bit about how to design and how to put together a piece of jewelry that would be a little bit more than uh, what you normally see, more than the standard necklaces and pendants and uh, a little bit more outside the box. So for this specific purpose, um, I am starting this project that's going to be actually in four parts. In the first part, I will uh, make uh, three pendants that are exactly the same shape using the same Mokumegane slices, but with different colors. And then um, after this one, I will do one tutorial on each of these uh, central focal beads and create a necklace around them. And I will show you how I create my um, uh, designs in a future video, uh, but you can uh, create your design without a lot of technology, without a lot of anything, just w by trying and putting things together. And that will show you how. So, if you're ready, let's go ahead and start creating our, starting our three different projects. You can see that I have here several colors that I'm going to use as a background. And as I said, for all these colors, I'm going to use the same Mokumegane slices. And I will explain to you what I'm going to do. Uh, this is one of the Mokumeganes we did in my part 4 of the tutorial series about Mokumegane. And uh, you notice that on this specific one, we have several shades uh, of red, uh, some toned red, some shaded orangish yellow, some toned orangish yellow. So there is no pure red or orangish yellow, everything is uh, either mixed with gray or mixed with black. Now, if I were to put uh, one of these slices that has a border of that um, changed red on something that is orangish yellow, be it even a metallic, like a gold or an 18 karat gold or even a bronze, it will get lost. If, if I would add some white to it, it will get even more lost. So what I need is to, everywhere I have that specific type of reddish uh, tone or shade, I have to back it with black. Now, with this one, that's a sea glass that I mixed some turquoise in. It looks like it's a completely different opposite color than those um, Mokumegane slices. But that uh, will allow me to create some uh, design that will make it very, very modern. And I will pair the Mokumegane uh, patterns with geometrical patterns and with uh, pure color. Uh, and you will see it will give a completely different effect than what I will do with um, all the other ones. So the colors that I will be using is, uh, as backgrounds will be that sea glass, then the gold, and then the white. The black is there just to help enhancing. The black, uh, the white um, always enhances the valor of any type of pattern, especially if it has a lot of dramatic uh, effect of um, contrast like this specific Mokumegane has. Uh, while on the gold, I will have to make one more pattern of some sort, because if I put just the Mokumegane slice on the gold, it looks pretty, but it will kind of get lost. So I will have to, in places, to border it with black, just for the plain border. 
uh, and in other places where it is enough uh, black in the pattern I can just leave it like this and I made the boo boo so that's why I'll show you what to do uh, not to make this kind of boo boo when you design your pieces so let me get rid of the boo boo and I'll be right back and we'll start working on these uh, focal pieces on all three of them will be in this tutorial and then I will do one tutorial for the finishing of the total necklace with each of them. Now let's start on the blue. I will first um, uh, cut the shape. I uh, ran it through the pasta machine on the medium setting because I don't want it to be too thick. Uh, this is already will be a fairly large piece larger than I usually make them um, except for when I make them on purpose large for you to be able to see what I'm doing but yeah I generally find the pieces that are too large with some exceptions to look gaudy so uh, as this will be fairly large I don't want it to look very bulky and heavy uh, this is why I am using just a, a medium thin setting because it will have something on the front and I will put some backing on it so it will become fairly heavy. So I am creating a type of uh, relatively flattish uh, rounded uh, triangle and I will do the exact same shape for all three pendants just to show you what is the difference uh, how much of a difference it can make the background the colors and the combinations that you're choosing now in order to design I'm going to place a piece of wax paper on top of the background and that way I can manipulate and handle uh, and create my design on top of the background without the pieces sticking to the background so I can first design what I need uh, and then just slightly uh, get them off the gently get them off the wax paper so I chose a slice that doesn't have uh, a lot of patterning because it will uh, match much better with the geometrical pattern and I am choosing I have a whole bunch of basic canes uh, I'm choosing some of the black and white and I will be using a striped cane and a spiral cane uh, first of all I will change the shape of the spiral cane and I'm not using all of it obviously so I am getting just a bit of it and I will triangularize it that means I'm going to change it into a triangle from the round shape <laughs> but yeah I don't know I don't even think there's a word like triangularize but this is what I am doing with that poor spiral cane I am molesting it uh, so I will make it into a triangle and I am also gently reducing it a bit to make it smaller and I will uh, create a little bit of a pattern with the, using slices from that and uh, then I will be using the stripe cane uh, to create not really a checkerboard but a um, double line design I am flattening a little bit the slice that I have uh, because of course you don't always cut even slices from the Mokumegane and especially me with my issues uh, now you see that the fact that the slice is on wax paper allows me to be able to uh, gently trim it exactly to the way that I want it to be so I'm using my exacto knife to create the shape that I want the slice to be in and again the fact that I have put it on the wax paper allows me to see the background but allows me also to uh, trim and cut it without it being placed on the background uh, the only problem is that I have to place it properly once it's all finished 
and make sure that you don't get any kind of air bubbles underneath now I will place my uh, my striped uh, cane line somewhere there and then I will place another slice on the other side of the striped line so I have to find another piece that has uh, less uh, patterning and I am trying to gently pry it from the wax paper this one is very very thin so I'll have to candle it with a lot of care so I am placing it on the wax paper to figure out exactly how I want it to sit and because it's so thin uh, and I will have quite a bit of uh, other shapes of interest there that will cover it I don't really have to bother too much on uh, um, shaping it and trimming it and it kind of looks like a little frog who sits back and relaxes with a big belly but yeah I have a very vivid imagination so I'm going to cut a slice of the striped cane and then I will be cutting uh, strips of it of course I need to flatten it a little bit uh, so it wouldn't be too thick when I place it on the on my uh, focal bead and uh, as I need the line to be longer than the slices I'm cutting several uh, pieces and I will be placing them to form as I said kind of a checkerboard pattern if you want but because there are only two uh, strips it's not really a checkerboard right so I am taking care to place the black on the white and the white on the black so I get that semi checkerboard pattern and I am gently curving it uh, I'm leaving myself some room to put that um, triangularized uh, spiral cane and again making sure that I have the black on the white and the white on the black uh, it seems that the one that I have there kind of got a little bit out of sync so I need to place it back to the point that it will create that uh, pattern and then I'm adding the second piece making sure that I uh, integrate it in the pattern already existing so what I am doing right now is to make a play of not just color but also geometrical form so I have all the rounded uh, shapes, mostly rounded shapes in the Mokumegane. And I am adding uh, some more uh, straight line geometrical forms, but they are not completely straight lined. Uh, there is some curve in there as well. So you can see better what I am doing. I got the close up and I will be placing these little uh, slices of triangularized spiral cane you can see that the spiral inside has a little bit of representation of the same pattern that is in uh, some spots on the mokumegane only that this time it is very simplified only with uh, black and white So what I need on the other side is a little bit of a color that wouldn't be exactly like the background but not exactly like the top either. So after I am burnishing and flattening things a little bit so I would have the exact same uh, level on everything. I am going to actually uh, get a piece of a bit of a darker blue than the one that I have on the background and uh, then also to add a little bit of interest I will be using uh, some black that uh, I will 
see, I'm trying various color patterns to decide exactly which of them would work the best. And see, this darker blue and the black work great. Um, and what I'm going to do with the black is to get it with a um, stamp. And then I would slightly brush with a metallic color that's in the same shade as the background. I will separate that from the um, uh, pinstripe, uh, the striped can cane with that darker blue that I will not leave like that because it would be just too empty. It would be just an empty space there. So... Um, So, um, of course, I'm going to put some armor all on that piece of clay and then I am doing uh, some stamping on it because I need some uh, dimension. And once I do the stamping, I'm going to actually cut two pieces out of it. One will go on the other side of the blue strip. And the other one will go on that left corner that you see it's not... Uh, populated at all and needs something there and I am kind of trying to follow uh, the pattern on the stamp when I'm cutting the respective piece out of the stamped clay Yes, I know. I'm always fussing so much. It's that need for perfection that I have <laughs> deep ingrained within me. Gee, what did I tell you? And then I will be adding a little bit more of that um, stripe cane just to get a little bit of a limit there, a defined space. It is all about defining spaces with shape and color. And then see the right side bottom side of the uh, focal piece also is a little bit lacking something so I will be putting a few more slices of that uh, triangularized um, spiral cane and actually I'm uh, if you notice I broke the line so I am going um, not completely uh, symmetrical obviously I mean it's kind of obvious <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway uh, so I need something on that uh, blue stripe because again it's an empty space as I said and we don't want any kind of empty spaces there I mean it's not there are some pieces that require empty spaces but this is definitely not one of them so what I'm doing is I'm ju I just made the three little dots and I'm going to just flatten them with the end of the uh, paintbrush handle to change the the shape and add another piece of interest now I am have to be very careful because only part of the focal bead is to be even and I have those other raised parts there yeah, I could have done this before I put the raised parts in, but hey, you know, 2020 back vision. So uh, what I will be doing here is to put, as I said, some metallic paint, that acrylic paint that uh, is uh, fairly close to the back uh, clay color, the background clay color. And I'm using that... Uh, 
pretty much dry paint uh, where you get some paint on your finger and then you wipe your finger off a paper towel so the uh, very little paint that you have on your finger will be almost dry and that way you can be sure that uh, you will be leaving um, paint only on the raised parts and if you mess a little bit like I did a little there just put a uh, spray some alcohol on a clean paint brush and then uh, lightly brush the areas where you have uh, gone over with the acrylic paint and you will see that it can be perfectly cleaned you have absolutely no problem and uh, once I do this this pendant is pretty much ready to go in the oven I hope you like it now for the golden pendant I will first uh, do this because it needs to dry I will make a border I'll stamp a border on a piece of uh, black clay that has a little bit of uh, gold mixed in there in bits and pieces and then I will be using some uh, red copper metallic acrylic paint to do the exact same thing with the, um, um, putting some dry rubbing uh, paint on the raised areas of the texture that I have placed on that black clay and yes I wanted it to have a little bit of gold in it and you will see why because I will be using that so uh, while that one dries I will be cutting my um, gold piece and yes, I always have to do so many cuts because that's how I form the shape of it in my mind. So you see, I form it first a little bit uh, deeper and then I refine the, the form to be not so tall and to make sure that it is perfectly symmetrical or as close to symmetrical as I can have it. And of course, my OCD makes me need to get that clay that's left over in a slice now I will do exactly like I did for the first uh, focal piece I will uh, get the wax paper with uh, the slices from the Mokumegane and I will choose uh, what slices I want I will want uh, some pieces that have both uh, golden or reddish tones on the edge that I will want to be uh, lost in the gold and that also have some darker uh, tones on the edge that will not be lost on the gold and on some uh, I will be using some um, edge um, black backing so I'm trying to find the best position for this slice that would look would take advantage of uh, fully of the elements that are on the Mokumegane slice and then uh, I will be trimming it uh, so it would fit nicely on the pen pendant and it would have a nice uh, pattern left on the slice and on the focal bead as well and I know when it's about these beautiful Mokumegane pieces, I kind of cry for every little piece that I have to trim off. And I'm always trying to use them in beads and stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a hoarder. Now see, I just saw the back of it and I'm like, why? But yeah, a little, uh, the side of it is a little bit too thick, so I shaved off the excess. And if you're wondering why my camera keeps going in and out of focus, there's a fly around. And when it gets close, it gets a close reference point and uh, it starts unfocusing. So I made sure that I evened it out with the roller. And you have to make sure whenever you 
place something that it is nice and even even if you're going to place something else that is more raised and you can feel it the better with the tips of your fingers after you are doing all the burnishing and rolling and all that and uh, yes in this video i just wanted to show you the full process i'm not really skipping over anything now my piece with acrylic paint is dried now so i am going to actually flatten it and uh, not leave it raised i will only keep the pattern that was uh, that has been drawn by applying the acrylic paint through dry rubbing on the former raised surfaces and um, i will use that as an element in the um, focal bead and remember i told you that if i want to put something there i will have to have another pattern on the other side so for now i'm kind of just uh, calculating where this strip will go and then i am choosing another piece to go there but this time i will be uh, backing that piece because it's a piece that has a lot of uh, yellow i'm starting really wondering why is my skin looking so splotchy in these super contrast videos because i did not get tanned i have a slight allergy to the sunlight and i get splotchy when i get in the sun but this is not the case So I'm trying to arrange those pieces um, so that I can take full advantage of their patterns. And sometimes they can be very stubborn and cling to my fingers, of course. But uh, yeah, that's how what I'm going to put in the corner. I make sure that I flatten it before I place it. And then I will do some more flattening, of course. Oh, let's see where I want to place it exactly and I will do some uh, trimming while the piece is still on the uh, wax paper and as I said I want to keep some spots that do have black backing and some spots that kind of blend off into the gold see there I, I don't like the fact that I had all that black taken out because there's a spot there that I don't want to blend off in the gold I want it to be enhanced by the black margin And I will leave it a little bit irregular. Okay, it's all about composition, honestly. If you notice, this one looks a little bit like a um, brocade fan. And has absolutely no elements of modern art. It's more um, tribally looking, if you want. And this is how I will be build the necklace around it with a more tribal looking look. And now I still have the corner on the right. 
I'm trying to show you the whole thinking process that goes into creating uh, wearable art. When you get uh, past the standards and you start thinking outside the box. Of course, what talks to me might not talk to you and you might find a completely different way of arranging those um, that would look more awesome than mine. You know, it's all about learning how to think outside the box, how to develop yourself, evolve past the basic techniques. And yeah, don't worry, I will be posting some tutorials that are more beginner level as well. But I thought it was about time for us to tackle this uh, subject, as we already talked about the color, some about color theory and about uh, mixing colors. Now it's about time to talk about uh, shapes, mixing and combining shapes. And uh, we will talk, of course, a lot more when creating the whole necklace. Because we will not go with just some plain beads in descending size and just a chain and or a leather strip. So this is the second pendant. And now let's go for the third one, the white one. Remember, if you're working, working with white, make sure that your hands are clean, that the surface is clean, that the pasta machine is clean, that your blades are clean, that your roller is clean. Otherwise, you'll be cleaning your clay forever and you'll get so frustrated. So it's much easier to just do this. What I usually do before I start working with the white clay, even if I wash my hands, I go with alcohol over them, I just take a bit of clay and I start uh, pressing it between my palms because that way it will lift off whatever is uh, nasty. Now what I'm trying to do here is to do a butterfly. So I am trying to find um, two slices of the mokumegane that would be relatively symmetrical so they can form the butterfly wings. So this will be a more organic necklace. And I have that corner there that's a little bit thicker than uh, the rest of the slice and then the other slice because in this case one of the slices is kind of thick and the other one is thinner. But it's fine if they are not perfectly symmetrical. I mean that's the organic, fully organic look. So now I'm trying to figure out exactly how to uh, place the slices so they would be as close to the middle as possible. And yes, there's I still need to shave some more of that. And then uh, place those in the middle because they are a little bit not in the middle. Because even if the slices are not the exact equal dimensions, I still want my uh, focal bead to have a defined center. Even if one of the wings of the butterfly might go more to the left than the other, or more to the right than the other, more towards the edge of the, the focal bead than the other. And then I am doing a rough trim right now so it will help me uh, when placing the um, slices on the actual cane because remember I'm still on the wax paper so I can do all my uh, trials without having the slices actually stick to the uh, clay underneath. And the slices will allow you to manipulate them a little bit, you know, if they are not long enough or wide enough, you can gently, very gently uh, pull and stretch or uh, crunch, crunch it together more. Because here I'm trying to achieve a 
for the slices to go a little bit closer to the uh, in equal distance to the corners of the focal bead so first of all of course I will be um, smoothing and evening out and only after that I will do the cut And uh, now what I need is the body of the um, uh, butterfly. So I'm getting a piece of that uh, black with some bronze acrylic paint on it and a little bit of inclusion of gold in it that I had left over from the um, a strip that I made for the gold pendant. And I will be using that to cut the body of the butterfly and I'll actually use the back of that slice because it's got a more interesting pattern than the front and then you see I have already cut a very very thin strip of black that I will be using to do the antennae and the clay is not cooperating Finally. Okay, and now that I did this, this one is also, uh, once I smooth it out a little bit more, is also ready to go in the oven. And we shall look at them one by one once they are um, baked. And then we shall have three different tutorials with three different necklaces and we shall create beads for each necklace and each piece of interest for each necklace depending on how different the uh, focal beads are for each necklace. So here we are with all three of them. I will get them a little bit closer so you can see them better. Uh, so I can see all the beautiful patterns and combinations and designs on each of the focal beads. Now the tribal one. And see how beautiful that bronze acrylic paint. Copper actually, but it looks bronzish because it's on black. And then the butterfly. So here we are and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Happy claying!